The title is not clickbait. I have sold a player for £150 million. And since you're last here, I've spent very close to £150 million. It has been a bonkers January transfer window. And now I'm back. It's the end of February. And we've got the Champions League knockout stages. There's lots to catch you up on. Shall we get into things? Yes, folks, how is it going? Welcome back to Arsenal. This is episode number 15. If you are enjoying the series, smash a like on the button before we get into things, mostly because if you're an Arsenal fan, you might not like what I'm about to show you. But I've sold Saka, and I've sold him to PSG, and I've sold him for £150 million. And, well, since we've sold him, he's played seven games. He's got one goal for them, and, I mean... <sighs> Players shouldn't have prices. There are players who are homegrown at club, who are world-class, who are very, very good like Saka that you shouldn't ever really get rid of in Football Manager. But money talks. £150 million for him? Would you have sold him? Wouldn't you have sold him? I feel like his overall league form for us had left a lot to be desired. And, well, I snapped off PSG's hand, and then I went and reinvested the money immediately. So over here on the transfer page, you can see Saka left us on the 3rd of January, right at the start of the January transfer window. As soon as it turned to the new year, PSG were knocking on my door. They wanted him. We let him go. The other man who I've actually decided to sell is Mukiele, which on the face of it might seem like a little bit of a weird sale. We made about £8 million compared to what we bought him for midway through last year. He played eight games for us, obviously made a lot of money off him his sale really triggered by a new addition to the squad that we invested in with well the Saka money 150 million pounds of course I was going to spend it and the first of those two new big additions you might have caught him on a few of the screens already Jude Bellingham is going to be donning the colours of Arsenal for the foreseeable future we have snapped him up from Borussia Dortmund he had a release clause of 81 million picked him up Eight games played, four goals from midfield already, and a 7.53 rating. This man has hit the ground running, playing as a centre attacking mid for us. Um, you might be sat there thinking, centre attacking mid, how is that kind of working? Saka's been playing out on the right, and I think it's easiest to show you things here. The way that we've changed our system is we've moved the advanced playmaker out onto the right-hand side. Odegaard is left-footed. He likes to cut in from that right-hand side. It's a position he can play fairly well. Of course, Vieira can also play out on that side. And when Saka left, I knew I wasn't really going to be able to replace him and that we might have to adapt the system. As soon as it became clear Jude Bellingham was available for £81 million, that would leave me with close to £70 million still to spend. That was the transfer I was going to do. Bellingham has come into the team, played as a centre attack in mid. This has kind of been our shape for the last month or so now. And to be honest, we've been playing really, really really well with it, as you're going to see shortly. Now, I realised by showing the tactic screen, I gave away the other big signing. Of course, he was on some other screens as well. Maybe you spotted him. Maybe you're eagle-eyed. Here we have Pedro Porro, 24 years old, a world-class attacking right-back. Of course, Mukiele has left the club. If we just compare Porro with Mukiele, they are two very, very different players. Mukiele is obviously a much better defensive player, better in the air. What Pedro Porro offers is just great attacking ability, though. 17 crossing, 16 off the ball he is a superb player going forward and yes his marking and his positioning aren't so great but the man's got 14 tackling he can wing back the ball well if he is caught out of position he's got pretty good physicals in terms of his acceleration and pace to get back into position and with the system change that we've done now using an advanced playmaker on the right it kind of made sense to get in a proper wing back both Mukiele and Tomiyasu they're more defensive in nature Pedro Porro offers us something going forward playing him as a complete wing back so far he's come into the team he's got three assists in six and we picked him up for 37 million pounds which isn't a small fee by any means but i think for what he offers us it's a fantastic bit of business Besides those four transfers, just one other of note, I suppose. Harwood Bellis has left the building. He's gone on loan to Burnley. Hopefully, he's going to get regular football in the Championship. Just a chance to hopefully see him develop. Just as a reminder, we picked him up for £5 million to be a squad player. Right now, he's valued at £14 to £17 million. The kind of man who, if he develops, great. If he doesn't, 
we're just going to sell him on for some money down the line. We're in February. I've played a lot of Football Manager since we were last here. A lot of games. We had this run of fixtures that all felt fairly winnable. I did actually record half an episode on deadline day, thinking we might do some late transfers. Nothing happened. I decided to just bin it off and come back now. First game today is against Crystal Palace in the league. A game that we should win, but that is going to act as an appetizer ahead of the Champions League knockout round. As you can see here, Benfica, the team we're going to be taking on, not the most difficult of draws, not the easiest of draws, one that I would really like us to win. Now, of course, the board expectation for this season was to reach the knockout stages of the Champions League, so tick that off, that one is done. They also want us to qualify for the Europa League. Of course, I've got my ambition set that little bit higher. And well, some good news from a personal point, I suppose, is... Just signed a new contract with Arsenal. It is, as you can see here, a four-year deal, £110,000 a week. Apparently, I only had six months left to run on it. So we got it renewed. They've invested in me. They like the work that we've done. And I can't say I blame them. Our form as of late, as you're about to see has been immense. Now, of course, last episode, we ended things with the game against Man City, part of a pretty epic triple header, which if you missed, you missed what was quite an eventful few games. And I was kind of looking ahead thinking, these games all look fairly winnable. And to be fair, they've not just been winnable. They have been games that on the most part, we've been playing superbly and not just winning by small margins, but big margins. Look at the defensive record and look at the clean sheets. Ramsdale holds the record for clean sheets right now. Of course, having taken on Man City, Norwich, Blackburn, Crystal Palace, we have today with the next three games. A 5-1 win against Norwich was really, really good. You can see here, Vitor Roque got his first ever senior goal for the club. One of a few Brazilians who's actually not been around at the club recently. The Brazil under-21 side had a load of games, so I actually lost a few key first-team players for this run of games. I'm going to use that as the excuse for the, the few games where we did slip up. But nevertheless, against Norwich, great to see him get his first goals um, in Arsenal colour. You can see here, he has now played three times in the league. He has started one game as well one for the future but one who uh well has proven that he has the ability to do it now which is nice Unfortunately, that fine attacking form wasn't on display against Southampton. We drew this game nil-nil. Should we have won? Probably. Jesus got a 6.1. All in all, a disappointing game, but a rare blip. And let's make note of it. It was another clean sheet, and off the back of it, we won two games with clean sheets. A 3-0 win against Fulham was great to see. Jude Bellingham scoring on his debut, and after that, he scored as we beat Leeds United 2-0. After that, FA Cup, Sheffield Wednesday, 9 simple win 5-1 there Watford and Leicester followed 3-0 4-0 and then we took on Brighton again Brighton you might remember we played them earlier on in the season and we lost 1-0 when we played them in the reverse game given the fact they're down at the bottom of the table we should be beating them as you can see here we lost 2-0 I don't really want to talk about it they they didn't create as much as us we just couldn't score I suppose the good news from our point of view is that is the one game that we've lost as of late, and well, the good news as well was, we bounced back well. The players took it personally, not getting the win against Brighton, and so against another team out on the South Coast, we took on Southampton. We won this game 6-0. We had 72% of the ball. Yeah, they had a sending off that might have helped, but it was still a great performance. And the Jude Bellingham goal, I think it was this Jude Bellingham goal, it was rather good. I'll tell you what, if I've now picked the wrong Jude Bellingham goal, this is going to be very, very awkward. He scored one absolute screamer in this run of games. I think it was this one. We'll find out together. Yeah, it was that one. 6-0. Not a bad way to, well, continue a fine start to his time at the club for Bellingham. You can see here an 8.4. Kessie, 9.7. Two assists in this game. You might have spotted it. I've been playing the 4-2-3-1 with the adjusted roles that we talked about earlier. It's been working really well in this run of games. And uh, yeah, Kessie was, well, just absolutely shining in this game, which is not something we've seen from our centre mids, I feel like, in the previous season and a half. In the month of February, maybe a slightly mixed bag. We drew against Everton 0-0. We just couldn't find a breakthrough in, in that game. Good news is, though, in the two games that followed against Aston Villa twice, we won 3-1 in the FA Cup. We then won 3-0 in the Premier League. And with that, you can see we're now in the FA Cup fifth round, where we're going to be taking on Nottingham Forest at home. And well, as for how things are looking in the Premier League, unsurprisingly... We're in a great little spot. We've had a very easy run of games. Let's not make any mistakes about it. But with 12 games left of the season, we are currently in second. If we win our game in hand, we go top. I will caveat that with the fact that we've got 12 games left of the season. Eight of those games are against teams in the top half of the Premier League. We've still got all the big boys to play. I'm not looking forward to them. 
if I just flip the order of our schedule so my head's not in the way, you can see the remaining games here. We've got Man City at home, Chelsea at home. We've got Manchester United away. Wolves, who are currently in fourth, we've still got to play at home. We've got Tottenham, who had an awful start to the year. They've been much better as of late. West Ham are in sixth, Liverpool are in third, and we end our season with Newcastle in ninth. Yeah, I mean, we could win the league. We're in a position to do it, but if I'm being realistic... It is going to be a tall order. So in terms of the plan of attack for today, now that I've caught you up with all the games and some of the transfers going on, we are going to be taking on Crystal Palace away from home in the Premier League, a game I'd really like to see us win. Just looking at our past meetings, you can see in this fixture last year, we lost 2-0. We need a better performance, but with Benfica being played in less than a week's time, I am rotating things a little for this game. Andreas, who's been in some really good form, is going to be playing out on the left cutting in on his right foot. Vieira is going to start this game ahead of Odegaard just as part of ongoing rotation. I suppose the good news for me is, since we've had this run of games, since we've started to find some winning form, the players' kind of ratings have been really, really good. I mean, look at the average ratings for the last five games. Compare and contrast this the last few episodes. I've never seen so much green in my life. That's because I don't leave my house and touch grass. But ultimately, we've got such a great team, a deep team that is in so much form that for a game like this, I feel like I can rotate things. And even with, you know, a few younger players, I'm looking at the likes of Andre Santos and Andres in the team. I feel confident we can get something here. You may have spotted it. I am playing Bellingham and I am playing Porro today. They have both hit the ground running, which is what we want to see. I think they've been contributors to our recent good form. Of course, I'm hoping that in their live commentary debuts today, they're going to be on fire. As we're going to have some early defending to do here. Crystal Palace, I think I've just headed it against the crossbar there. Not what I want to see in the first few seconds of this game, to be honest. Going to shout an early demand more. Never too early to get shouty shouty. Half an hour played in this game, there is not a great deal of opportunities being created by either team. Of course, this is our first time using a Shadow Striker for an episode. I hope you're going to see what it's all about because Jude Bellingham in this role has been really, really good for us. I knew that when we sold Saka, we weren't going to be able to get that perfect replacement, but I think Bellingham and kind of with the alternative players in the squad, the likes of Odegaard and Vieira who can move wide, uh, we've kind of just made that transition work quite well, having lost a significant important key player but someone who I didn't really view as perhaps irreplaceable and of course with the advanced playmaker in the wide area it's added a bit of a different dynamic to our team end on Bele foul Bellingham there the advantage is played and oh my word I thought for a second Fabio Vieira was about to score an absolute banger Guaita in goal has made a mad stop there Okay, at the break, nil-nil. Crystal Palace had that great opportunity from a set piece immediately. From there, they've not created a great deal. I'm going to tell the players I'm far from pleased. I did notice that Zinchenko has picked up a little bit of a knock. Don't really want to risk it, so we're going to bring in Tierney. Elsewhere, not been wowed by Vieira's performance here. I'm going to make an early call. Martin Odegaard, a man who has been a real spearhead to our attack, albeit out on the right-hand side. Can he be a spearhead to our attack if he's in the wide areas? I know, like, the tip to the spears in the middle, but it's a wonky spear. Odegaard makes stuff happen out on the right-hand side. I'm bringing him on. Okay, I feel like with an hour played here, we've got to change things up slightly. We're going to go a little more attacking in our play and a little more direct. I don't want to change things too radically here, but yeah, going to tweak things slightly. I'm also going to give Pedro Porro bit more permission to get higher up the pitch. In terms of personnel changes, I'm looking at Jesus and his rating and thinking, you have got to come off, son. Andreas hasn't played great either. We're going to bring in Martinelli. As I mentioned briefly, we've had a few players who have been away on international football. Martinelli is one of those players. You can see this gap in his form where he's just not been playing games when we have been. Yeah, Brazil had some under-21 tournaments. So some of you South American viewers can probably tell me what tournament it was that happens in January. But yeah, we had three players vanish for that. Martinelli was one of them. We've missed him. Hoping he's going to be able to come into this game here and have an impact. Of course, though, Crystal Palace as the home team are going to back themselves to maybe snatch a goal here as Mendy has the ball on this near side. Crosses it as well towards Elise. And Gabriel has just pushed over his man. I've played a rotated team here. I've brought in Gabriel. I've left Tadebo on the bench thinking it's going to be fine. We don't need to worry about it. It's Crystal Palace. And uh, as has always been the case, whenever I hit start record, we give away penalties, we start getting sendings off, and now Eze has a chance. Sends Ramsdale the wrong way, 22 minutes left, we're a goal down. With 17 minutes left and our recent form, I would not put it past us to come back in this game to get a goal or two, and maybe somehow come away with all three points. 
I'll tell you what, I, I'm not going to say anything more. I very nearly put my foot in it. Tierney has forgotten how to play football there. We still have a corner to deal with. What just happened? Can someone explain to me my left back's decision making? Eze's going to cross it in. Can we get it away? Ivan Tony, man of the moment, gets away to Bellingham, who thus far isn't having a live commentary debut to remember. Although if he was to go all the way forward here and score... That would be good. Never, never mind. Highlights over. Free kick, though. Odegaard. Back post. Martinelli with the ball now. Can he make something happen? He can make something happen. Welcome back to the team. It's only his fifth of the season. Not a bad time to get it. And having very nearly shot ourselves in the foot and given up a second goal at one end, within a matter of moments, Crystal Palace left to regret their miss. Ball was headed away. Martinelli picks it up in an area where he's not really a threat, but from nowhere... He pulls off a shot, hits it low and a cross goal, finds the bottom corner. And you know what? I'm about, I was, I was about to change things and then another highlight started. Of course, when you look at the XG, Crystal Palace now are in the lead. But given the fact they have had a penalty, which is like a 0.7 XG or 0.79, I think, it kind of skews things slightly. We could have a chance here. Jude Bellingham has scored. Martinelli's got the assist. Martinelli can start next game. Might have to start him against Benfica. That is what I want to see. We've come back from behind. Two highlights in two minutes. Martinelli won the ball. Jude Bellingham nodded it on. And well, little did they know, or did we? They knew. We didn't. They were going to link up once more. Ball back inside. Bellingham scores in off the post. It's his fourth goal already. Not a bad time to get it. With that, I am just going to change things up slightly here. Porro, go to a wing back on support. Tierney, wing back on defend. Andre Santos. You can just play as a deep line playmaker now and just sit a little more. And Odegaard, switch to the support role, please. We're going to slow down this game slightly, up the time wasting. 15 minutes left, including extra time. Let's just kill this off. Three minutes left. One shout of encourage to end the game. Jude Bellingham now hates me for the shout. Maybe I'm going to live to regret it. If they score, it's all because I shouted encourage. You can see here, Crystal Palace have thrown so many more men forward. This year in Football Manager, the AI, it cranks up the pressure at the end of games if it feels like it has to. What would have been nice there is just to see Martinelli run into the corner. He's not done it, and we could be inviting another attack on Tierney. Cannot be bothered to run back and chase Salise. Nice tackle. Goes out for a goal kick. Surely that is the game. I'm going to pause things here. Up the time wasting to the max. No looking for the overlap. I just, I just want a nice, simple win, please, football manager. Blow the whistle. Why are we showing me this? Please stop. Okay, this is... Well, do you know what? Actually, it's quite satisfying watching us time waste. That'll do me. Aaron Ramsdale, you beautiful man. It finishes here 2-1. Going to be honest, don't necessarily think we deserve that on the balance of play, but a few moments of quality by some very good players secures us three points. And, uh, well, having now played a rotated team, I feel suitably prepared for an away game against Benfica. Of course, it is only the first leg. You can see here it's happening on a Wednesday. It is four days away. Elsewhere in the league, Manchester United unfortunately won, as did Man City. Tottenham got a win too. The only real result of note, Wolves, who are currently in fourth, lost. With that, they stay on 51 points, and you can see they have played a game more than us. Similar to last year, it feels like there's a top three emerging of ourselves, Man City and Liverpool. Martinelli, you beautiful man, that... A pretty good performance by the 22-year-old, continuing to improve as well. How much has he improved since I came in? Can I take any credit for his improvement? Maybe I'll take a little of it. Right, we've got Benfica in four days. I'm going to get ahead to that. I'll talk to you in a moment, as I said earlier. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like on it, feed the algorithm. Let's see how we get on in this Champions League first knockout round, first leg. Okay, gang, game number two, taking on Benfica. Away from home, it's not going to be easy. Just before we get into that, worth acknowledging some injury stuff. I've not really talked about it today because I was too excited about all the new signings, but a couple of injuries are of note at the moment. The big one, you might have spotted it, Rodrigo tore his hamstring in January. He's out for up to three months with it. Still out for three to five weeks, so a significant injury. The good news is it hasn't impacted his physicals too much just yet, although his bravery has has gone down. You can see, obviously, it came in a win against Sheffield Wednesday when he came on off the bench. He has been a little bit of a miss. He has now missed 12 matches for us. So, yeah, that's one of the reasons why Andreas has been playing more on the left, although I think today we're going to have to give Martinelli the start. Elsewhere, another man who's picked up a real injury of note 
um, is if we just find him. Tommy Asu, he is now coming back from injury. Bit of an annoying one, this one. It happened not that long ago, but as soon as I saw Mukiele, I've now got, obviously, as backups at right back, Pedro Porro, Ben White, Tommy Asu. They are the right back options. It was a bit annoying when Tommy Asu got injured. It was one of the reasons why, for that previous game against Crystal Palace, my hand was somewhat forced with Porro, but of course, Porro has 17 natural fitness. So despite having played a few days ago, he will be fit for the game today. So for today's game against Benfica, with the exception of the Rodrigo injury, we are pretty much at full strength. Of course, Odegaard is going to start out on the right-hand side. You might have noticed that with the change in the attack in mid-rolls, I have actually flipped the two centre mids. Kessier now plays at left centre mid, playing that defensive mid role, playing it really, really well. It has to be said, his recent form has been, well, very good for a defensive midfielder in Football Manager. McKenny by comparison, has been in and out of the team, but as is indicated by the green bars, when we've played him, he's been very, very reliable, have been just, you know, continuing to rotate things. The actual schedule for the last kind of month or so has been pretty horrific. I mean, you can see here eight games played in January, pretty much games twice a week. It's been wild, but as a result of that, there's not been too many players who have played every game for us. In terms of our Champions League squad, of course, we can have extra players on the bench. Due to the registration rules, due to losing a homegrown player in Saka, we are slightly down on our overall Champions League squad size. I think right now we've got a squad of 24 registered, which is still more than enough players in reality. I suppose the one area of the pitch that is a little bit of a talking point at the moment is centre-back. At the start of the year, I kind of drew a line and said Ben White, Tadebo, they will be my starting centre-backs. Tadebo, on paper at least, he is our best centre-back. According to our staff, they think Ben White is the second best centre-back, but neither of them has had a particularly amazing run of form. I will say Ben White, you know, I've given him a run recently, he has played very well in it, but there's definitely been an argument that Gabriel could be, you know, starting at centre-back. That said, having given away a penalty last game and given some iffy form, to say the very least, I think for today's match, I'm going to drop him. In terms of kind of the last five ratings and average ratings, our defence is actually where we struggle the most at centre-back. Obviously, Ben White and Tadebo both averaging below a seven. But as you've already seen with our Premier League form, Clean sheets have been a plenty, so I'm not really sure why the centre-backs have been getting low ratings. Ramsdale right now with 16 clean sheets in 27 games. And, uh, well, that has been, by and large, playing the centre-back setup we're using here. We're going to just hope it comes good for us. In terms of Benfica, I am a little wary of them, of course. You can see in their group stage, they were in a group with Young Boys and Partizan. They actually made it through Group G just about. It wasn't the most convincing of performances. And with that in mind, I think we should have the better of them today. Okay, let's get into this one. They are playing a 4-4-2. They've got an Artovic in their team because, of course, they have David Neres on the right, Rafa on the left. Decent players in the wide area. I think I spotted a wild Otamendi at right back. That might be something we can exploit with Martinelli in terms of our team. The 4-2-3-1 is at our disposal and, of course, is as is a customary with FM23, we get the lovely cutscene. I'm going to say it every time. I wish we had more of these cutscenes in FM, just all the time. Have these for every game. I get that we want the Champions League to feel special, but the fact that they've now done this and shown that this is possible makes me want to see it for everything. I don't know about anyone else. Anyway, let's get into the game. As nice as cutscenes are, I want to see some performances on the football pitch with the game having started. Just as a little reminder, a couple of years ago, Champions League got rid of away goals, as did all European competitions. So whilst we are the away team here, it's a case of damage limitations in a weird way. Away goals would be great, but if we come away with a draw, I'd back us at home to beat Benfica. I'm sure our players want to put in a statement of intent, though, in this first leg and get a big early win, as Jude Bellingham is going to work back. Bellingham, worth noting, not a natural centre attack in mid. He's kind of accomplished in that role. We're training him to play there, but because he has his roots slightly deeper and slightly further back, he's very, very good at winning the ball with our pressing system. Porro, oh my word, I thought I was going to go in from McKenny. Pedro Porro was getting inside. It fell to McKenny, who had an effort from range. But yeah, just circling back to the Bellingham point, you can see. Only accomplished at centre attack in mid. But because, you know, he can play as a defence in mid, because he can play as a box-to-box -box midfielder. I feel like as a shadow striker in our system, he works really, really well. He is the most complete centre mid, I think, in our squad. 
Obviously, McKenny and Kessie are kind of more specialists in their respective games. Bellingham can do a bit of everything for us. Corner on the far side. Martin Odegaard takes it, tries to pick out Ben White. It's cleared away. Only as far as Odegaard, though. David Neres going to get it away from danger, but Benfica leaving no one up in the attack. They are firmly parked in their own half from the set piece. Martinelli's picked up a bit of a knock. That's a concern. With Rodrigo already out, I don't really want to aggravate any kind of injury. We'll wait and see how this highlight plays out first, but I am leaning towards maybe taking off Martinelli here. For as good as his performance was on off the bench against Crystal Palace, I don't think it's worth risking it here, as there could be a chance. And Artovic played in behind, and I'll tell you what, that shot wasn't far wide. I am going to make the sub. I am going to take off Martinelli here. Kind of sucks that he has to come off so early in this game, but I'm going to bring in Andreas. I am actually going to play him as an inside forward on attack, I think. Benfica... They're playing Otamendi at right back. He has no pace. He's not going to get up and down the pitch all that well. I feel like I don't need to worry about him on the overlap as much. And, well, Andreas, he's going to be given permission to attack. We'll see if he can find any joy out there. Because early on in this game, there's not been a lot of joy to be had. Neither team has found a breakthrough yet. But just before halftime, perhaps an opportunity. Odegaard cleared in on his left foot. Could he find the back of the net? I'll tell you what, for a second I thought he was about to. He's hit it just wide. Not been a half of a whole lot of chances. We're yet to have a shot on target. But that is going to be the final action of the half. And whilst at kickoff, I said, you know what? A draw would be fine. If we could take a draw going into the home leg, I'd back us in that. Doesn't mean I'm happy with this performance as things stand. And while it could get worse for us, it's a set piece. We dread these. They scare me. Ramsdale saves this one, though. I'm pleased to report. Early on in the second half. Good to get the goalkeeper a little bit of action. Didn't have too many touches of the ball in the first half. He's now going to look to distribute it long. Ball is dealt with, well, initially, at the very least, by Benfica. Verissimo with the ball at the back, looking to pick out David Neres. Tierney reads the ball well, keeps it in play, hoping he's not going to turn over possession there. Oh, my word, that was a crunching tackle from behind. And it's a red card, and it's not a red card for me. Right, pause the game. I can't believe this. We've seen a red card in Football Manager that wasn't against me. I didn't think we'd ever see the day. Looking at how Benfica are playing, they're playing a 4-3-2. With that in mind, I'm going to drop Kessie deeper. I'm going to move Bellingham across, and I'm going to switch, I think, McKenny to play centre mid on attack. I'm going to give Tierney, I think, a bit more permission to get forward. You know what? I don't trust McKenny on a book. And I'm going to bring in, I think, Emil Smith-Rowe into this game here. A player who's been in and out of the first team, but when we've called upon him, at times at least, he's had an impact. With how they're playing, I feel like we can overload them going forward now. They've got no one defending in the wide areas. So with our style of play, with us playing mega, mega wide, in fact, I'm going to ask the players to focus it through the wide areas. I want to believe we can maybe double up on their wing backs, find some joy there. They're going to be a man down for this second half, really looking to just exploit the spaces that they are going to be leaving behind being down a man. And while an early goal would certainly ease my nerves, ball play to Jesus scores. I think he went a little bit too early there with his run. It'd be an amazing goal to score, but I don't think this is going to count. It was a nice ball by Andreas. I felt like he jumped the gun slightly. Jesus just needed to hold off his run slightly. He didn't do it. It wasn't timed correctly. It would have been his 24th goal of the season, but... It doesn't count. And when you look at the replay, it wasn't even close. So Benfica are sticking with their 4-3-2 system. Just looking at things. Odegaard's not having a great game out on the right-hand side. You know what? Fabio Vieira, it's your time to shine. A Portuguese player who, of course, previously was playing at Porto. He's going to be a little bit familiar with today's opposition. We're going to see what he can do for us. I'm actually going to play him as an inverted winger, I think, as opposed to an advanced playmaker. I am committing a lot of men to the attack now, but... I feel like we can afford to do that in this game. We're 25 minutes left. They're down a man. They're leaving two players forward. But I want to believe that between Kessie, White and Tadebo, we've got the better of those two players. And that with everyone else, we can just look to get forward that little bit more. Okay, I've made a switch of mentality, going on attacking. I feel like the rest of the instructions and everything else we're doing are kind of fine. The fact we've not been able to find a breakthrough besides that offside goal is a bit disappointing. Chances have definitely ramped up in our favour in this half. Down a man, Benfica really just looking to see out this match. But, well, we might have a little bit of defending to do here because Otamendi is going to play it inside. It would be very on-brand, wouldn't it, having kind of slated Otamendi as a fullback option. 
for him to somehow be involved in a winning goal. And Artovic has got it forward. He's played it inside. Kaisen has finished it. And the Swedish striker finds the back of the net. My head is in my hands. I hate everything. Oh, I don't want to watch that again. I mean, what's happened there? Defensively, we are all over the place. Tierney, Kessie gives it to Bellingham, who loses possession. But then, I mean, Tierney just doesn't get goal side. We're pulled out of position. Ben White loses his man. And it's all very simple for them. Jesus hasn't had a good game, but I've just realised I don't have any more subs. I'm so used to using five subs in the Premier League, I've burnt through them all too soon here. I'm going to bring in Smith-Rowe and play him as an advanced playmaker on support. Tierney, I'm going to switch back to being on support as well, I think. In terms of kind of our play here, I want us to be more direct with it. Less working the ball into the box. Let's hit early crosses, look for balls into space. I feel like this game is still here for the taking. Of course, it's only the first leg. There's part of me that feels like maybe I should sit back, but no, I'm going to go for it. You know what? 10 minutes to try and find a goal. They're down a man. There is an opportunity here. Are we going to be able to take it? Doesn't feel like it right now. I'm sure that when you came back for today's episode, you saw all the green in the form. You thought, wow, he's winning again. Someone in the comments section a few days ago was talking about, Jack, this, ep this episode, this series... It's kind of fun because you never seem to know what's quite going to happen with your team. I feel like if you tuned in for today's episode, you might have worried, been worried that that part of the save game was lost. I'll tell you what, in the two games today, it's very much back. Is there one late twist here? Is there a late equaliser? Is there about to be a second goal for Benfica who are down a man? Just as a reminder, I know that would be hard to remember given how they've played in this game. They played really, really well, to be fair to them. And, well, they could have a chance here. And Artovic has scored. I'm praying the flag's going to go up. Uh, is the flag going to go up? The flag has gone up. We've not been shown a cutscene or anything there, but I can only assume it has been ruled out. Ten minutes left. It's going to end, I think, this first leg 1-0 to Benfica. We are going to have a lot of work to do in the second leg. I want to criticise the time-wasting of their goalkeeper. We did the exact same thing against Crystal Palace. And uh, just for confirmation... And Artovic was offside. No idea why we're being shown that now. The full-time whistle's gone. But there you have it. 1-0. Um, hmm. I mean, what do you say? They went down a man. We had that goal ruled out. They've scored somewhat against the run of play. I think it's fair to say. But ultimately, didn't show enough in this game. That is a disappointing defeat against 10 men of Benfica. The only silver lining I can really find is Martinelli only has a bruised knee. He will be back next time. So looking ahead to our upcoming schedule, we actually don't play Benfica for a little while. You can see here, though, we have Man City right before we play them. The games are coming thick and fast. Inevitably, those are the two games we're doing next episode. There will also be a youth intake. So, yeah, you've got that to look forward to as well. Thank you for watching today's episode. As always, let me know in the comments, would you have sold Saka? Was £150 million too good to refuse? I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Besides that, take it easy. Hopefully, we're going to have some consistency to end the week tomorrow. And until next time, until then, it is me, Jack, and I'll see you on the next one. I'm out.